Okay, so now let's see what happens in uh, Hilbert space. So let H be a Hilbert space. Okay, and um, we will call the set ut um, t in R, like always, is called. Well, now we are not taking positive R, we're taking all, all the, um, all the line. It's called strongly continuous um, unitary group. So now we are with unitary groups. Um, if satisfies the following conditions. Okay, so these conditions will not be different to the ones in the semigroups for in some way uh, is a generalization so first of all u of t pulses has to be u of t multiplied or um, composed with u s this is for all t s in r Second, we are going to say that um, for any x in H, the map um, T U T X is, is continuous, okay? So that uh, we can call it strongly continuous. And third, it's a unitary group, so we are going to ask that uh, for any R, a T in R, U of T is a unitary operator. Operator on H. And that is to say that ut u star or a joint will be equal to u star t u t and this will be equal to identity okay okay so now let's suppose that uh, t t is a um a contraction semi group okay So, um, on a Hilbert space, um, so, um, so let's consider the uh, a joint semi group, okay, T, T, T star, okay, okay, so the a joint semi group will be a contraction semigroup too. One can see that uh, T star 0 is equal to y and the T star of S T star of T is equal to T star of S plus T so that we have the other semigroup uh, properties and one can see the um, the continuous part by taking in consideration that um, well what we want to see is what happens with the limit when t goes to zero of uh, t star t x minus x in our case we're going to see what happened with the squared of t's because t t x minus x squared can be written as uh, tt x squared minus t um, joint t star x x um, minus x t star tx and then the remaining uh, will be x 
this squared, okay? So, um, we have this. Now, note that t star tx is less than or equal than tt one side norm of x and this is less than or equal than x recall that tt is a contraction semigroup so we can make this bound so with this we know that we can bound this term by x squared okay so we will have uh, two times x squared but what happened with this two uh, terms is uh, negative terms so the thing is that uh, t star xx which is equal to x t t x um this converges to x squared as t goes to zero okay recall that t of zero i okay so this will leave you with xx the norm of x squared so we will have two times x squared and now we have um subtracting two times one for this and one for this of x squared so finally um, all these uh, go to zero when t goes to zero and so we've got that uh, the limit when t goes to zero of uh, t star t x minus x squared is well less than equal to zero we can say so we have that uh, t star t is a contraction semigroup okay recall that the contractive semigroup was when you can bound uh, the norm of tt with uh, that um, it doesn't depend of, of uh, the time t and the bound was uh, one the m that we we had the tt it is an equal than m e w t so this w was zero so it doesn't depend on time and this uh, was one okay okay so a level we have that uh, let b the generator of a, a joint semigroup let's say um t star T, okay, and A is uh, the generator of the contraction semigroup T T. Then we have b equal to a star okay so let's see why first um, for any first uh, x in the a and y in db okay domain of a domain of b we consider uh, inner product of a x y this will be equal to the limit when uh, t goes to zero of one over t um, in a product t t x minus x y okay okay so now one can consider well what is this we have t t x minus x y that can be written also as t x y um minus x y and uh, now we can, we know that t star is uh, 
the, um, the joint of TT, so we will have x, t, t, y, star, okay, this will remain uh, the same, and now knowing that we have here and x, here and x, we can join both of them, we will have finally t, t, y, minus y. Using this, we will have the now, this is the limit when t goes to 0 of 1 over t of x t t star y minus y. Finally, this will be x b y, will be the generator of uh, t star. Okay, so this is telling us that the y's that are in B, or in the domain of B, are at the same time part of the joint of A. So, we have that uh, B is included in A star. Okay, so now, on the other hand, let's assume that uh, uh, y is in the a star okay okay so we have y in the a then so we'll suppose we have um t t x um minus x y and now we will recall this theorem the tt well we have x on the f in this case um, is equal to a of uh, the um, integral of t s x or f but uh, we will also use this one because we have in the a so we will use the case that this is zero that s is zero and we have the a inside the integral so, this will be equal to the integral 0t of a t t x y dt and this will be equal to the integral 0t of x t star t t a star y dt and so going back to where we started, we will have that this is x t t y minus y, and this will tell us tell, tell us that um, well, here I forgot a star. So t star t y minus y. This is equal to um. Let's put it here down. The integral zero t of uh, t star t a star y dt. So this is telling us that uh, um, the elements of a star because we started with y in the, in the domain of a star are also part of what we call b b the generator of t star that tells us that uh, um, a star is included in b so we have both in, uh, inclusions they're both equal the first part we assume that we have people in the generator of t star Okay, and we proved that, uh, that they ended being part of what a, a star would do, that is to be in this part. And then we made the opposite. We assume that we have people in a star and that uh, they would uh, be part of what a generator for t star would do. Okay, by the theorem that we saw a long time ago. Okay, so then we have that b is equal to a star.